Today we're going to be testing out this new gun. This is a R500. It is made by Rongpeng, but it's branded under YT160. So this is a new seller of this particular gun. It's an R500. YT60 is the number. I'm not sure if it's available on Amazon yet. I'll let you guys know. If it is, I'll put a link in the description. But it's basically the same gun as the AeroPro A610, which is also an R500. It's a low volume, low pressure paint gun, consumed under four CFMs. So very good for home use, for hobbyists, and it produces a beautiful looking finish. These guns are great for rain out of your garage or at home if you want low overspray, material savings. We're gonna go ahead and seal this bumper with it. We'll seal it, we'll paint it, we'll clear it. I'll show you how it performs and we'll take a look at the finished results. This particular aftermarket bumper came pre-primed, so we sanded it and prepped it out with 600 grit sandpaper to smooth everything out. And now we're adding Bulldog Adhesion Promoter just to ensure that we get proper adhesion of the new sealer and paint. And we're gonna set this gun up for sealer at 15 PSI. As far as the fluid volume, which is this knob here, we're gonna close it all the way. We're gonna open it up one, two and a half to start with, just to see. I think that should be enough. And then as far as the fan pattern, we'll open it up all the way. We're gonna spray it just like base coat. So you wanna overlap about 75, 80%. You wanna have a consistent speed and a consistent distance when you're spraying. So my distance that I like to spray at with these air pressures is about five to six inches away, sometimes a little bit closer. You wanna apply a smooth looking sealer when you're painting with this gun. That's the goal, smooth sealer. It's got a little texture to it. So I'm going to reduce my fluid volume, keep my air pressure the same, maybe bump the air pressure up a little bit and reduce my fluid volume. So the gun's spraying really well. It lays down a beautiful looking sealer. Now, as far as sealer goes, we only need one coat. And even if it's a little bit transparent in areas, that's really not gonna make a difference. We're gonna be applying paint over this, but it does give us one uniform surface to apply our paint to. Okay, we'll get ready to spray the base with this uh, YT-160 gun, low volume, low pressure paint gun. Let's uh, set the air pressure. It's at 18 PSI. We'll go one, two turns out on the fluid volume and the fan pattern wide open. Let's go two and a half on the fluid volume. There we go. If you're working at home, you're probably working out of your garage or outside. Chances are you don't have a paint booth. So I'm spraying in an open garage with no paint booth. You can see my doors open. Because of that, I want the least amount of overspray possible. So that's why I set this gun up the way I did. Now just remember these gun settings are all adjustable. No one gun setting is perfect. So just because I'm suggesting this is how you do it, to get these results, yes, but you can adjust it. Don't think it's set in stone and you need to be at these settings. That's not the case. Adjust it to where you feel comfortable. That's the most important thing is where you feel comfortable. Your gun settings, are these are just a guide. Now, you can change the appearance of how the paint's laying down or the clear coat's laying down by some other techniques like your speed and your distance, and we'll get into that later on when we clear. It's running well, but I'm gonna bump it up just a little bit more. About 20. Yeah, that's just a little bit better. This is dry enough that I'm gonna go ahead and put one more coat on it. It's drying quickly and I'm having to, I'm spraying a little bit slower because of the low pressure. All 
All right, so we're gonna tack this bumper off before we put our final coat of base on, probably our final coat. If you need to get into a tight spot, you can always adjust your fan pattern down. So here you're gonna see me narrow my fan pattern. Now, typically you wanna adjust your air pressure with your fan pattern, because if you don't adjust your air pressure, you're gonna get a lot of paint in a small area. Now, I just adjusted my fan pattern and I moved away from the panel quite a bit. With my experience, I understand how much paint's gonna be coming out of it, so I can adjust just my fan pattern and hit those tight areas in that bumper. Before you start clearing, make sure you have good coverage on your part. Check all those tight areas, those areas that are hard to get paint to, and make sure they're covered. You can use one of these sunlights, or any light will do. Just got our second coat on this bumper. I just wanna inspect it. I saw some particles of dust, like right here. So what we're gonna do is take this 800 grit sandpaper, and I'm just gonna smooth these out a little bit, and then we'll put a drop coat on this just before we clear it. So I'm looking this over real well. And this is a uh, just a good opportunity to look for any particles of dust, get yourself a cleaner paint job in the end. Anything that can make it just a little bit smoother is gonna help out. Because we went ahead and sanded out those particles of dust, got those imperfections removed, we need to add another coat of base to get those scratches covered. Now they're not very deep scratches, so I'm just doing a drop coat here, or some people call it an orientation coat. This is to make sure everything's nice and uniform. The only thing I'm doing different is just moving back a few inches so I'm not putting as much material on the panel. Now, you don't wanna do a bunch of coats like this, you just wanna do maybe one. Okay, we got the YT-160, the low volume, low pressure budget paint gun. We're about ready to lay some clear on this Mustang bumper. We're gonna set it up at 22 PSI. I'm gonna do two turns out from close. One, two, fan pattern is wide open. First coat, we're gonna just introduce the clear to the surface, not looking to make it perfect. And then the second coat, we'll slick it out. So the first coat, we'll lay on, then we'll lay, wait about 10 minutes in this heat. We'll wait about 10 minutes and lay up on the second coat. So earlier I talked about sharing some different spraying techniques that are gonna allow you to keep your air pressure low, your overspray low, and still lay down a beautiful looking clear coat. And the way we're gonna do that is with our speed and our distance from the panel. So I'm able to spray a little bit quicker on this bumper than when we were spraying our base coat because I moved a little bit closer to the panel. So probably like an inch or two closer to the panel, I'm spraying about four inches away. And I didn't really have to adjust my air pressure or my gun settings at all. Now we did bump up the air pressure to 22 PSI just because clear coat is a different, thicker product and you wanna have enough material coming out. I don't want any dry spray or anything like that. Uh, but you can adjust all that with your speed and your distance. So if you notice, I am spraying a little bit quicker here and I'm experimenting here. So as I'm laying down this clear coat, I'll go, I'll go a little bit slower to see how that clears laying down. And then as you see here, I start to speed up and I move in a little bit closer. So we really slick that clear out and get a beautiful looking finish. If you're new to painting and spraying clear coat, I would just say experiment with it. Do a couple test panels, experiment with your speed and your distance and different gun settings and just find out what works well for you and what gives you the results that you're looking for. Okay, so after the first coat, you notice I sprayed a little bit closer to the panel with a little more speed because of the fact that it's 100 degrees and it's drying really quickly, so I wanted to get the, get the clear on there. This is the first coat, so we're just introducing that clear to the surface, and now we'll slick it out. But there's a couple little dry areas, but we'll even that up on the second pass, and it is pretty much ready. I'm gonna come in here and hit this edge. I'm gonna dial my, dial my fan pattern down and hit this edge real quick before I start anything.
got a bug. I'll have to pick that out. Okay, after the second coat of clear with that low volume, low pressure paint gun, the YT160, it came out beautifully. I adjusted my speed and my distance. I got a little bit closer to the panel in order to get the finish that we were looking for because it's really hot today and this clear coat was drying pretty quickly even though I was using a slow uh, activator. But yeah, the finish came out beautifully. I really love how these low volume, low pressure paint guns spray, these budget guns. Uh, they really spray really well. And I think you guys, if you're interested in a starter gun uh, that really, really is easy to use and gonna produce a beautiful looking finish. So there's a lot of things to like about these guns. If you're a hobbyist, you're working at home, you know, low over spray material savings, you can use an undersized compressor with them. So a lot of things to like about these guns, so I would definitely check them out. Uh, I have links in the description, but if you look up R500 on Amazon or on the internet or AeroPro A610, I don't know if this YT160 is on Amazon yet, but you can check it out. And if I have a link for that, I'll leave it in the description. Listen up, I hope you enjoyed this review and demo of the YT160 low volume, low pressure paint gun. Another great option if you're working out of your garage. And if you want to learn more about paint and body repair, check out one of these videos now. I appreciate each and every one of you watching. We'll see you next time on Garage Noise.